hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You can hear That's me. That's the first time this has been successful like that. Holy crap. Can you hear Philip? Uh, no, I, well, I can hear me. I can hear Philip. Okay, it's working. <laughs> okay, wait. Before we get into iWorld and any of the iWorldiness, because it's not like we don't have plenty of iWorldiness to get into, I want to hear Captain Web OS's <laughs> response to the dearly departing HP. <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs> if, you if, I, if, I, if I had a flamethrower, things would be burning. <laughs> Are you one of these people who's like running to eBay paying $300 for any of the slates you can get no. your hands on? I, 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 actually, I actually never uh, was going to buy the touchpad uh, as it was, and that's why I never owned one. Um, I was, I was, and I think I've stated that before, I was waiting for a 7-inch version of the touchpad, and it was rumored that that would come out some time ago they, they were rumors going around that there was going to be a 7 inch version coming out you know, the, in the, the, October I, I, you know, I'm blaming these rumors because these rumors are leading to more and more of us tech people getting screwed you were waiting for the WebOS device you wanted I was waiting for the Nexus 2 because I'm like the Nexus 1 is great but I want the Nexus 2 and then they never made the Nexus 2 and it's like no 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 I had, I knew, uh, and was worried, and many, and many people also said, hey, Mr. Bitt, uh, you know, HP has a bad reputation of destroying things. And they were right. And I, and I knew that, but you, you have hope. When, when, you, when, you, when you want something to succeed, you have hope that it, that it does, and that it's the one time that history doesn't always repeat itself. Yeah. It would turn out to be a success, and, it, and unfor very unfortunate that it does not, so... Well, th this is really more what happened with IBM repeating itself than what HP's done in the past, because they're literally just kind of pulling a banker and saying, Screw, we don't want to even be in this at all anymore. Right. O only... And, and, for the, and for this idea, you wanted me to have a bottle of tequila, I hope I'm in Coke suffices. Yeah, yeah, I have great minds think alike right there. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, it, I, I can't really say much. I mean, it's just, it, it is what it is. I, I, I'm, I'm angry about it, and I, and I think I put enough posts on Twitter to express that. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, none of us noticed that. <laughs> well, I guess it's just a good thing I don't have a flamethrower. I'm my next HP, so that's all. Uh, okay. I will, I will say that, that given, look, the current uh, CEO... Really, I, I was uh, skeptical. It, it, it was um, Webos was brought in by the former, which HP which has CEO since recently. left HP. Yeah, and he I remember he had the scandals and all that stuff, and he was and he had to resign. And then we have the uh, the new guy. I can't ever pronounce his name, Hippodica or whatever. Oh, I just call him Hippopotamus, uh, but that's me. <laughs> but um, he's totally an SAP guy. You know, he's totally enterprise software, local middleware and all that other stuff, and that's exactly what he's wanting to... No, yeah, that, that's what HP is doing. They're, they're like, we are no longer in a hardware business. If anybody wants to buy our hardware business, come buy it. <laughs> and I remember when they acquired Compaq. I mean, Compaq is right down right down the freeway from my work. Off of it. I'm getting feet. Tried lower. Better? Let's see. I don't know if it's my mic or what, but I'm getting this little feedback. But anyway, so yeah, there's a big, very large now HP campus that used to be compact, and there was two of them. There was one off the 290 and one off the 249. The one off the 290 closed completely, and then the one on 249, I think, expanded. Now I don't know what's going to happen to that, but I wasn't surprised about the PC spinning off business. That that started when IBM decided to roll off their PC business, and that was. Predominantly because of Asian competitors that are well, really but see, I, I, there is a notable difference in my opinion between what HP is doing now and what IBM did then. When IBM did that, a little known fact was two to three years before that happened, every ThinkPad was already being made by Lenovo. It was just basically yeah. giving the brand to the people that were manufacturing it. Was was all that was. Exactly. As a matter of fact, it's exactly what's even happening with Apple products, we can, which we can get into, which I know we're going to talk about um, Steve Jobs' resignation, but the, the, 
it, it, that makes sense to me. I mean, for HP, it's fine. I, you know, other markets have a comparative advantage, and it, it's wise to yield to it. Um, it. It just leaves Dell, and I wonder what it's going to do for uh, Apple in terms of desktops. Now, but the, the, really, the two biggest desktop players are, are Dell and uh, Apple. True. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that, that, that Lenovo doesn't compete here or any other Asian markets, but I... But those two are going to get the highlight of, of, of more of an American-based company, even though that's a facade of, of location. Well, uh, and, and and L- Lenovo I- has followed IBM's business practices of having no retail presence whatsoever. If you want a Lenovo, you have to go to Lenovo. Dell is in Best Buy, Fry's, yada yada, and so forth, and so is Apple. Like they're there. They're there for the consumer to get. Only people yeah. who go buy an IBM or excuse me, a Lenovo now are people who go to Lenovo.com and buy a Lenovo. <laughs> sure, sure. And, and I understand that, that there's not a whole lot of profit to be made as it is in the desktop market. And not to say that they can't move units. I know that Apple uh, purists love to say, oh, look how much profit that there is. And I mean, you know, profit is determined by how much a, a consumer is willing to pay and of course, how much margin the markup is, is in place on that product. And when something is, is that much of a commodity as, as desktops have become, it is harder to, to compete and make, make a, a larger margin, I think, as, as you would like. But I guarantee you, you go to a lot of hospitals, uh, and, I, and I discovered do a lot of programming for hospitals and education, and, and Dell is everywhere. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things I think Dell has done right, since we're you know making this largely Dell versus Apple, they have not followed in suit with what Toshiba, Gateway, Acer, and HP did, which was race to how cheap can we make the box. Right. They kind of said, "Yeah, our cheapy box is four to five hundred dollars. We don't. We they don't even really promote or put any oomph behind their three hundred dollar right. computer. They don't want to sell a three hundred dollar computer. They want right. to have a machine that has enough margin to justify." It. They don't go yeah. overkill yeah. like yeah. Apple does, but they do keep enough margin in there. Well, on top of that, when Michael Dell came back as CEO to Dell, he moved. He made a play of utilizing uh, selling desktops, of course, as a commodity, but adding services on top of that. And that's pretty much what IBM is doing now for enterprise level you know, services. And, and there's plenty of services to do mm-hmm. for, for desktop grade applications, and, and, and Dell has definitely started that when Michael Dell came back. Uh, at CEO, and, and it's and it's obvious he, he uh, returned the company out of disarray to uh, what it is now, which is doing pr- well. Yeah, well, and, uh, and this like like before we get off completely into Apple, what you were saying with HP, it 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 hit out of left field, but considering some of the companies they acquired in recent years, like EDS and so on, it it makes even more sense because now, granted. Anybody who was working for EDS didn't necessarily fare so well because they just wanted the EDS name and the EDS technology, not the EDS people. But they do have all of that now, so they can s- provide those well, type I, of industry I solutions. Well. I, just hope, I know he's not interested. I, I just think you should just, just move on. Sell WebOS. If, if he wants to sell it to, to Apple, great. I, who I think now that I've thought about it, I've, I've named a few people that, that, I've, that I've posted, but I, I think... I would like probably RIM to, to get it, although they, they have QNX, so I don't know how that would that would jive because they have a real-time operating See, now that, that's the thing. QNX would not want WebOS because... I, mean, I know, but, but I would have to have the packs, though, because, see, there's a similarity to what WebOS has packs. QNX is very free-flowing. I'm saying that they could take those packs and then and then program the, the, the elegance that WebOS had into QNX. And, and protect their intellectual property in, in that manner, so that QNX yeah, could that, be. That, 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 that's a good point because odds are, given the current shape of the industry, whoever buys that division of HP is not going to be buying it to make any of the products. They're going to be buying it for the patents uh-huh. and the things that it owns. That's going to be it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I really want them to succeed. I really don't want this to become an iOS Android market. I really. Don't I'm in the Android think. camp, but I don't want it to be that because it'll put both of them on their ass and they'll stop innovating. Mm-hmm. I, I, so I'm rooting for RIM. Like I said, RIM was my backup uh, if WebOS didn't pan out for products. I think I, I think I set my goalposts as this was either HP makes the seven-inch uh, touchpad first, or BlackBerry makes the QNX phone first. 
and whoever really hit was going to be the product that I got in 2012. I so said, call, like call me really crazy, bad. I think one of those is a lot more liable to happen than the other one right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. It, it, so, what can I say? I, I, I will attribute uh, just WebOS and um, say it, if I, as I've said many other times, to me it's, it, 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 it's, it's the best mobile operating system and it is as other like uh, BIOS that I know you spoke about in the Mac vs. PC show. Yeah, actually, BIOS Tommy did, was, but yeah. Was the, be- was the best operating system for, for multi-threading and what it did, it just didn't take off. Uh, it was, it, programming at that level was more expensive and just unheard of and therefore BIOS found no place uh, in, in, in the ecosystem. And uh, it's sad to say, you know, the best doesn't always have to survive. Sometimes the best just goes to the wayside, so. That's just the way things are. Unfortunately true. Moving into the Apple universe, uh, where do we want to start? <laughs> so we have a couple of places well, to start. Let's, with. start. let's start with the MacBook here. Let's get some of the quicker things out. Uh, okay, yeah. MacBook. It's like three weeks ago there was a new Mac Mini and a MacBook Air. Um, <laughs> that's like, yeah. Both of them I want, so. <laughs> <laughs> Big surprise. What did I say on the stupid air? It, it's yeah, it, it got the it, yeah, it got the i series upgrades. It can now have i processors. It's like okay, yeah. Uh, I wasn't paying attention to how much more memory they added, but for the for the air for the machine that is, that's not as much an issue. The i processor is a, a good improvement for that series. Mm-hmm. I, the MacBook Air was played against, of course, when it first came out. I have video to, to, to prove that. But uh, I think the price that we we'll probably would be looking for. My wife wants a laptop, and I'm, I'm sure she's going to want to get the air. But see, the thing of it is is that my, my I sold my old MacBook that I used to I had one for, for, for a while. And, and they now uh, don't the exist. This to needing a, a mobile device again. Uh, so I'm also in the market for myself for MacBook Air, but my wife is definitely uh, probably going to get her um, and now, it, 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 I, first. I have a new bitch, and I forgot to say this on PC versus Mac about laptops because I, for those of you who don't know, I spent the last three some odd weeks out of town where my sole computing device was a little small portable computer, and I have officially decided that when it comes to a portable computer, I hate 16 by 9 screens. I have officially decided I want a 4x3 or 5x4 screen on my portable computer because I want that horizontal real estate on a portable screen. On a desktop where I have 20 plus inches of screen real estate, I'm fine with 16 by 9 But anything smaller than 20 inches, I want that extra horizontal real estate. You can't buy it anymore. Nobody makes it, but I want it, damn it. Uh, and, and that's never going to happen. You know, the official stance out of every OEM is nobody wants a four by three. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I found that I've, I, I've of recent uh, enjoy and want products that the masses don't. So. Yeah. You fit in that category as well. Well, no, but it's it. it what it is the people whom that's important to are people whom are actually trying to get work done. And not people who are trying to get work done while playing. While playing 16 by 9 is great because your video, your, you know, your DVD video and everything fits. Or the video you downloaded from, I guess since we're in iRoll, I'll say iTunes. We'll assume you're, you're in the Yobs verse. Which isn't the Yobs verse anymore, but we'll get onto that in a minute. Uh, but if you're actually trying to get work done, like you have a document on the screen and you want to see a whole page of the document, or you're writing lines of code, any programming language, it's like you want to see as much of the code as possible to follow it and so forth. And in that, the most important thing is a number of horizontal lines. And the thing that crossed my mind when this thought came to me is I realized my now almost a decade old uh, ThinkPad down here, that is actually a ThinkPad, not a Lenovo, has more horizontal lines than any than any laptop you can buy in the market today because it had uh, 1,280 lines horizontal. Which is more than even the highest high def uh, yada yada monitor you can get right now on a portable device. So I'm like, that's sad. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, uh, so I, I guess the Mac Mini, yes, uh, that I, look, I have a 2006 Mac Mini. It's still kicking ass, but I want to move it to my bedroom because the the bedroom uh, is 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 becoming more a place where my wife and I enjoy watching. You know, when you have three kids now, we have three kids now because I have a new, well, not new boy, but he's three months old now. So it's harder for us to really enjoy the movies like we did in the past uh, in the living room. So I'm desperately wanting to move the, the 06 Mac uh, Mini. Are, are you trying to say... And then replace, they replaced the, that one with the newer Mac Mini in my living room. Are, are you saying that the bitlings have evicted you and your wife from the living room? I'm sorry? Are you, are you saying that the little three bitlings have evicted you and your wife from the living Something room? No, no. I mean, it's, it's that you're exhausted. You know, you get, it's right now when you have a little one. And there's a bit, and she she's she's doing so much and uh, taking care uh, of of our young you know, and, and and I always say as a guy yeah, you can you can kind of help. Them. I usually am the disciplinarian now, so I'm usually I'm usually in charge of the, of the older kids and 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 he's like I said my youngest is three months so she she does a lot of the work but she's exhausted and she deserves to be able to you know enjoy uh, stuff that we have in the living room in the bedroom so. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I need to, to move the, the our existing Mac Mini in the bedroom. Because I have all my movies on there. You know, I rip all, all of my DVDs and put them digitally, and we like to just kind of watch the movies from there and, and, and or just watch Netflix from, from, from the uh, Mac Mini as it is. And that'd be great to, to, to have all that functionality. It's currently in the living room in the bedroom and then just replace it with the uh, 06 with the new Mac Mini in the living room. Well, and, you know, it, admittedly, uh, this version of the Mac Mini has addressed a lot of the why does it not do this issues with the Mac Mini. It's now finally, two year. it should have been two years ago, but it's finally i-series processors. It, it finally supports 8 gig of RAM, you know, as opposed to the 4 side, uh, which is a, a good thing. I, don't ex I know there's boards out there that now support 16, but I don't expect them to be using those. But it's like the, the board, there have been boards that supported the 8 gig plus for a while. Why didn't they have? Why weren't they using them? Right. Finally, are uh, the uh, big complaint on this thing is, is like it's it, it's incompatible with some of their other marketing. You know, they're saying everybody wants an Apple TV, but Apple clearly understands that a lot of Apple users <laughs> think <laughs> like you. Apple TV. Apple I use plus box. No, I know that, but it's now they have the third version of the Mac Mini, and they call it the Mac Mini Server, and that's literally that, that's to be sold for people doing what you're doing with the Mac Mini. It's like, yes, I want it to be my little media box in the corner. I don't want an Apple TV. I want a Mac Mini. It's like, <laughs> exactly. It's like uh, I, we, need, we need to hear from Phil on these two. I haven't heard from Phil, so let's. let's yeah. Phil. Yeah, I mean, from my point of view, I mean, I had the. Uh, the first gen of the Apple TV and for and for the first 18 months that was that was perfectly fine but the problem was that when it started to come to other stuff like other media files like where I was ripping my DVDs and whatnot obviously the Apple TV could do those if, if you hacked it but on its own where it was more stable and more reliable it couldn't do that so I ended up um, well I think it was back in March I, I found um, a piece of software that was available for free that could display all the movies and what have you in real decent looking graphics and so I've been, wait, been waiting for the Mac Mini to come out and with, with the hardware they've had you know, I, I actually got one on, on the day it came out and uh, it has done very well so I definitely think that they have done a good job on it. Which one did you get? Um, I got the i7 and I got uh, the 750 hard drive and I got the basic RAM but I've got another uh, four gigs here on the desk that I'm going to put in, so oh. I am going to go up to the eight. But uh, okay, I'll, I'll cool. Do that myself. Okay. Yeah, it's like uh, 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 the one thing on. The, it's like a. Do you find this? It, I'm, I'm going to ask you around the holidays if you're finding the 750 gig enough, because <laughs> one of my things on this, I'm like, yeah. It, Given where the hard drive's been put in the Mac Mini, I wish they'd offer the one and one point five terabyte drives. Dude, I have a five hundred gig. Well, let's see. I have a. Now I have the. My 06 can only handle. God, what is that drive in there? It's very small. You know, it's 06 technology. So, 
It's I want to probably say probably like three hundred. Sure, maybe a hundred and something gigs. Hundred eighty, hundred sixty. Five hundred external, and, and and that's holding a lot of. I mean, my movie collection and, and music collection. I, I, I I'm just thinking about for the server one. Because so, uh, on the server one, if that's really meant to be the box that sits in the living room or in the bedroom or whatever, and it's your, it, it, you your, mean, your Apple house, and it, it, it's like your server yeah. one. It's like you, you don't just have your files on there. Uh, yeah. You have yours, your kids, your wife's, your son. And, you know, it's easy to tear through a terabyte doing that, if not yeah. over. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I, I basically don't. I have client server in my house, but I don't manage the data in client server. I do, it, it, it is, my data is still very much, I guess, peer to peer and redundant in many places because uh, I, I, I guess I just never, I don't want to always push from one central location. I find it faster when any of, much of the media is in, in the well, uh, computers themselves. And then, of course, it can be it's backed up on the network, and I have a backup central repository, but it's not the main streaming source. If you get what I'm if you, yeah, you can wind up with some latency there when you're when you're doing that. But I, I guarantee you, most people wouldn't care in the same way they don't. Care. Well, they would, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't equate it to that. They'd go, "Why is YouTube being slow at 6 p.m.?" You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, I'm just thinking. You know, it's, um. Uh, okay, since y'all are both Mac Mini people, y'all are better people to ask this to. Okay. My personal opinion when it comes to the USB is I'm... I don't think 4 is enough. Because as far as I remember, the Mac Mini doesn't have a keyboard mouse port on it. So if unless you're using the wireless one... I'm using wireless. Yeah, but if you're not doing that, you're using, the, you're using a USB board for the keyboard and mouse. Um, it, it's... Are y'all finding four enough, or are you kind of wishing that it had six or more USB ports on the thing? I want to go for it. Yeah, well, I, I've, I've got, um, goodness knows how many cords are coming out the back of my TV, and they all go past the side where the Mac Mini is, so that would be extremely cluttered. So, I, I, I mean, I might end up using them for something down the road, but as of the moment, they're probably just going to stay empty, and it, uh, if I do find something to use them for, it would be something unexpected. As of, as of right now, I'm looking at them probably staying empty. Okay. Uh, for myself, I still have both USB ports as well. Um, I'm a more FireWire fan, so my external drives are running, they keep checking uh, FireWire. So, uh, okay. as far as USB, I think there's only one port being used for USB, and that is for um, the uh, HD tutor. So there's... Uh, open open USB ports because I do this is my media center so I'm, I don't have anything wired as far as peripherals are concerned and a mouse and keyboard because those are wireless so I have okay. you know, plenty of USB ports open okay see my logic was I was thinking like it's like you'd plug a printer into it, you'd plug a iPod into it, you'd plug a Kindle My printer into it. is all wireless here in the house. Uh, I, 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 actually, those are actually attached to my network switch. No, that's the thing. And more, have, more and more households are having wireless printer, but I would argue at this point it's about 50-50. I would argue half the households, it's USB, half they have them on their network and just share. I don't think that's every household yet. More right. and more of the current printers coming out support that. And they're designed to literally just plug them directly into your router, no setup, no nothing. Just go find my printer, <laughs> it's like, uh, as opposed to trying to make the you know printer play nice. Uh, or um, and most of the better ones I've seen have wireless built in. Although I've seen hit or miss with those because a lot of them don't support Web two <laughs> for some reason. Uh, that's um, so so. So it, it sounds like unless you're actually using it as a computer, that's not going to be a thing. As long as you're using it for the primarily as the media device, like oh, it's a non-issue. And it sounds like it's designed more for that than to be used as a computer, anyways. Yeah, I think. I mean, now, uh, man, you'd be hard pressed. Look, portables do do far better for desktops than Apple. That's that's been that trend for quite a few years. So uh, the Mac Mini was slated at one time. From insider information that I got from from uh, Apple employees in, in the retail area, that they're like, yeah, probably gonna, you know, and, and I think it, they kept it on because there is like a, a, a 
cultish following of the Mac Mini that find uses for it. You know, the, the, the Mac Mini Mini Center that I have on YouTube is some of the highest view counts that I have in my entire video collection on YouTube, and I think it's 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 climbed to that status. And people like this little engine that could mentality. It's like it's a small package, and I've seen it used. Uh, in clusters like driving cars, automated things, you know, people make it server farms, and, and I just think it's got like that nostalgic thing uh, that that it's the, uh, the engine they could, and people and people like that. It's like this under underdog computer that people want to buy because it's the underdog. And, uh, and uh, it okay, M moving into the topic you don't want to, and we'll ask Philip's reaction on this first, and that is since you brought up slating. The fact that they now have a Mac Mini server and there isn't a Mac Pro refresh, <laughs> do you think the plan is to neglect if, the... <laughs> if they're going to do the unthinkable, I, I, I'll just say this, why didn't they do it with the Mac, with, when they did the MacBook? I, <laughs> why? <laughs> well, well, you can only... Is, is it actually, actually Intel ready in terms of logistics with, with, with Apple? I think Apple... I mean, look, when it comes to Mac Pro, I think there's dealings that they... I think it's more of an Intel relations issue than it is to say we're going to kill the Mac Pro. I don't. I still don't think that they want to kill the Mac Pro, but um, well, I could be wrong on that. Well, I just you, think it's you more of an Intel to, thing. You have and to listen, admit. Listen, go ahead. I think I, I think that they switch from Nvidia to to AMD. I wouldn't be surprised if we if we start to see AMD creeping into um, Mac Pros and hiring. I think I I, I, I think that. Um, ARM is also going to suck the Intel out of Apple's mobile devices eventually as well. And that, and, and that day, I can actually bring a bottle of scotch on this video and we can celebrate uh, the demise and, and, and leveling out of the Intel dominance on, on our... <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm just pointing out that as things stand now, and many people have, that technically some of the Mac Minis are capable of challenging some of the Mac Pros, you know, just saying, you know. That's uh, I mean, well, yeah, but that's, see, that's an Intel spread. That's what I'm trying to say. This is not <laughs> Apple. This is Intel. I mean, Apple takes care of the designs, but we're, we're talking about power. You go and bitch at Intel. Intel is where the lines between workstations and, and consumer CPUs, not Apple. Oh, no. I mean, I, I, Intel has a I, I'm that's close, I can stand Intel. I, I, Intel does all this bull crap that we have to put up with because nobody else wants to use, you know, I wish a big player would take uh, AMD and just, just tell Intel to go to hell and give AMD that, that spark. Well, the uh, current, the, the current positioning to, to I, can, I can't stand this. The current this AMD is, systems aren't really a challenge. However, in, in line with your logic, here's what I'm honestly seeing happen. I'm seeing... Uh, the cycle run of AMD chips that get announced in 2013. They're not going to do this in 2012, but in 2013, Windows 8 will be out. Windows 8 is going to be largely form factor and chipset agnostic. It's uh -huh. going to support ARM as well as Intel, as well as uh, it's, it's going to support well, X86, 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 yeah, X86 and everything. And I can honestly see AMD, who doesn't really have an offering right now that's in the same league as the higher end i7s and Xeons and so forth, going, you know what, we're going to make an offering in that, but we're going to do it based on ARM. And we're, that's going to be our offering for that because it makes sense then because, you know, I'm Linux, you guys are OS ten people, but the reality is you kind of have to give some cadence in the industry to what Windows supports and you have to wait till the current version of Windows supports that chip if you really want to sell it. <laughs> well, for me, again, it's hardware discriminations in terms of what I mean by discriminations is that is that purported tiers or differentiation between products is that it doesn't matter who the OEM, whether it's Apple or what, what have you. I mean, obviously, if we could have, uh, make, let's say Dell wanted to make more boutique-looking computers like a Mac Mini, they'd be under the same they they they'd be in the same pond and saying, well, really, these are our options. You know, what do we do? And I, I, I don't like how the blame goes on the OEMs when it should be squarely on the shoulders of Intel. And well, 
well, that we should all be pitching it Intel for saying, why did it take you so long to do X, Y, and Z technology like interconnects and their 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 bull crap with the with the memory controller hubs that are that are finally caught up with AMD and everybody freaking else that we paid all this ungodly amounts of money for crap in my opinion. But we just had to put up with it. Well, the, so. and, and, and Intel sufficiently diffused that over onto the OEMs where. Uh, I can't remember if it was two, three, or four years ago, recently, like in, in the latter half of the last decade, Intel basically redid their charts, where you had to be a technician or a purchasing agent to figure out which tier a CPU was in. Was it aimed at this, 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 or that? And they did that on purpose, so that the consumer and everybody was going, well, it must be their fault, because Intel is everything all over the place. <laughs> you know, they basically broke all the naming conventions. They were still doing the same thing, but it was it was deliberately to confuse people. I, I swear was why that renaming and re was yeah, done. But we, we need to move on and sit there. Yeah, we, 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 we